All right. Uh, welcome back and many thanks for staying with KTN News Weekend Prime. And in the second hour, we shall be taking an in-depth look on the topic of discussion on our Health Digest segment this, uh, on this edition. But first, let's take a look at the top stories this hour. All right, so let me bring in my colleague, Dr. Masi uh, Kandie, uh, Masi Korira, I beg your pardon. And uh, earlier on, we saw that story of that procedure that took place at the Kenyatta National Hospital, the 16-hour surgery. And Dr. Masi Korira is just going to talk a little bit more about that and just to let us know um, how these procedures take place. How prevalent are these kind of cases, Dr. Masi? Thank you very much, Sharon. With me is uh, Dr. Adeline Villemboa, and uh, from the story, she's the, she was the lead surgeon. She's an oral and maxillofacial uh, surgeon who was the lead doctor, uh, together with other anesthetists and the plastic surgeons who were able to remove the massive tumor that uh, Rosalind Wanyama had. And now, Dr. Ari, um, how common are these, uh, these cases that you see? The amyloblastomas, or specifically amyloblastomas, actually make 60% of our benign tumors. Benign tumors meaning tumors that are not cancerous. So it actually forms 60% of all the tumors we see. And all of them actually don't have to be that massive. Some come quite early, we can do in two hours, some come in three hours. Some you can do in about four hours, six hours. So they don't have to be that massive all the time. Yeah. And then one, one of the questions that has been on very many people's minds is uh, um, how, what, what are the symptoms, or what are the signs and symptoms that as a layman uh, mm -hmm. should look out for mm -hmm. so that I, I, I know when to seek your attention? Yeah, treatment. Yes. Yeah, so the main symptoms one would look for all the signs, usually you'll find a growth in the mouth or just an expanding area or a swelling, what a layman would call, I have a swelling. And if it's amyloblastoma, rarely will you find it being painful. Sometimes we actually just pick them incidentally. When you take a routine dental x-ray, you're actually able to pick a lesion on the jaws. So from there then we are able to actually go ahead and test them further. And sometimes because they're growing, if they're a bit bigger, you find the teeth will tend to space out. So the patients will come complaining that now we, can, we actually cannot bite well because the teeth are actually spacing out since the tumor is actually expansile. Mm -hmm. And also you may find an area. Sometimes some of them will say if there is secondarily infected, they'll come and tell you that there is pus coming out from mm -hmm. this particular area. So is it possible to differentiate uh, between the one that is cancerous and the one that is not cancerous? Um, sometimes you can. Most of the time you may, sometimes some of them actually may not be so specific. But if there are cancerous lesions, sometimes they come back when they're ulcerated, there'll be pain, there'll be change in sensation in that particular area if the lesion is actually involving the nerves in that area. So the patient will come complaining of numbness in that particular area. And sometimes if there is no ulceration, the lesion may just be fast growing, extremely fast growing. So you find within one month, it's extremely big. Then that actually starts giving you a pointer that it can be a cancerous lesion. And uh, what, what causes these uh, growths in, in people? For the cancerous lesion, the main association now are factors, tobacco. Nicotine use is actually one of the main causes of most of the cancerous lesions. So you'll find most of the cancerous lesions actually affect the soft tissues of the jaws or of the face. And tobacco has been highly suspected to be a major cause. And tobacco with alcohol actually almost tends to double the rate of you getting a cancerous tumor. For the slow tumors, that you'll actually find the benign ones, you'll actually find most of them just affect the jaws. Many of them will affect the jaws. And if they're affecting the jaws, it means that we actually have remnants of what used to form teeth. 
that actually just tend to get disorganized and develop into tumors. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, what we saw from uh, Rosalyn, she had it on her lower jaw. Yeah. Is it that they only happen on the lower jaw or do they also affect the upper jaw? They affect the lower jaw more than the upper jaw. But we actually still see them in the upper jaw. But mm -hmm. the lower jaw much more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. About 80% of them will actually be in the lower jaw. The upper jaw rarely. But they are there. Okay, and go, go, going back to Rosalind, and it, I think it's a story of many Kenyans where they go from hospital to hospital not being able to be treated or to receive that uh, care that they need when they have some of these uh, symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, how, when, when one finds uh, that they have something that they are suspecting, could be either, if it's either cancerous or not, what should they do or where should they seek help from? I think most of the major hospitals now actually almost have an oral maxillofacial surgeon. If we don't have an oral maxillofacial surgeon, we have a dentist. We are actually all trained baseline to pick out anything very early. Yeah, so they should actually pick it up. If it's something they are actually able to do in the unit, when, before it grows so big, they're actually able to do it. We are all trained to do that. So they should actually do that early. But if they feel now it needs a little bit more, of specialist help, then they can actually refer. But now we have almost a maxillofacial surgeon in almost every province, what used to be province. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we have almost a maxillofacial surgeon almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So should should they should somebody go first and seek a maxillofacial or should they go through the dentist and go the be, dentist. be assessed by through the, the dentist? dentist? The dentist should be able to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they should actually be able to pick it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so now we had uh, this, this surgery this week took 16 hours. Yeah. How often or how often do you get to, to, to operate on such cases, seeing that one took 16 hours, that's almost a day, that's a day gone. Yeah. So how often are these surgeries really done? Uh, we have a multidisciplinary head and neck team at the Kenyatta National Hospital, made of the maxillofacial surgeons, the ENT surgeons, plastic and reconstructive surgeons, the anesthetist group. So we actually do it every Wednesday. Yeah, and it doesn't just have to be from our unit. They can be in any of the other units, actually. So we do it on the multidisciplinary head and neck team because it's easy to get one team that is actually able to work on them. So every Wednesday, we do them. So yeah. are there other facilities across the country also able to perform such uh, procedures? That is difficult. <laughs> I think it's a bit difficult. Because if you look at what Rosalind had, we needed to replace her lower jaw, mm -hmm. and we needed an implant. Luckily now we have suppliers who are actually able to devel deliver them to the rest of the other units. But the problem now is needing those teams. You actually need a team, and a very dedicated team considering the amount of time we spend. So we need a dedicated multidisciplinary team. Mm. Yeah. OK. And then we know uh, one of the biggest challenges across Kenya is the uh, cost of health care. Yeah. How much does it cost to, to do such a surgery? For this particular one, the implant only cost us 240000 The implant only. You are not talking about the bed, the hospital, say. You've not talked about the theater fee. The implant only was 250. So we are lucky at least some well-wishers came in and actually facilitated that. That's why we were able to do it at that particular time. But some of them, the smaller ones, it can actually be less because the implant will not be as long as what we needed for Rosalind. So it may be a little bit cheaper, but it's costly for a patient. Because sometimes if they're slow growing, we actually send them to go and purchase the implant because the hospital may not be able to, to purchase them, and the patients will not be able to pay for them. So they so will get in trouble with the suppliers. So we ask, we ask the patients to pay for them, for the implants, to actually purchase the implants for us before we do the surgery. Mm. Yeah. See, seeing that uh, it's, it's a costly surgery, and you haven't even mentioned the, uh, the doctor's fees, and in this case, luckily, there, there was no doctor's fees. Um, what, what would you advise people to do so that they can afford, they can avoid the, uh, the adverse effects of out-of-pocket spending? We would, we would actually just pray that people try and get routine checks. Yeah, if, even if it's once a year, try and get a routine dental check with an x-ray, what we call a, a dental 
panoramic view. It actually shows all your teeth from joint to joint. And if there is anything one is able to pick from that. Mm -hmm. And habits, 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 tobacco. So we wish Kenyans would reduce tobacco in whatever form, sniffing. We get patients who chew tobacco, the smokers. Yeah, so habits, habits, habits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, as we wind up, would you have any uh, tips, okay, apart from just uh, good habits, mm -hmm. any tips that, we sh that are easy to keep up with from in, just in the house? Mm -hmm or on a day-to-day -to, -day to maintain oral hygiene so that, because I know just apart from the ameloblastoma that we are talking, the tumor we are talking about today, mm -hmm. there are other <clears throat> things that may cause infections or other cancers yeah. uh, in the mouth. Are there any day-to-day -day activities or tips that people can get used to so that, you know, they do not get to get some of these diseases and some of these uh, tumors? A late presentation. So we would ask at least everybody Normal hygiene, bl brushing your teeth at least twice a day, morning and evening, that is baseline. And also when you're brushing, try and check around for any new things that have developed there that was not there. And if you feel there is a swelling or maybe an ulcer that is in your mouth, you've, you've seen it. Let it not go for more. I tell my patients, please do not go for more than one week. If it's more than one week, we need to have a look at it. And if it's just within one week, come, we have a look at it. If within the second week it has not gone, then it means we need to do something else to actually make sure that uh, it's not transforming to something that could be a little bit more nasty than the slow-growing tumors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk, talking of uh, watching out for time, you know, Kenyans, we are, we are we are used to self-treatment, eh? self-treatment. Yeah. Are there some of these uh, self-prescriptions or uh, own prescriptions that people do for themselves that can actually worsen situations. Yes, and also now herbalists, because patients will come to you and tell you, no, I want to go and try something else that had been said. And then now the supplements. Yeah, patients will tell you, I want to try supplements, because now they go to read and they tell you now, this, I've read somewhere that this and this actually stops cancer growth. So maybe we need to limit that, that in case you have any problem, please let it be checked. Do not treat yourself. Do not treat yourself. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then just finally, um, and I think many Kenyans have experienced this, where you go to a hospital and everyone is a white, in a white coat is a doctor. How does one get to, to seek the right person? Um, going through the system, I think, because from at Kenyatta, comparing what we have at Kenyatta, we have a system. You come through the records people, they open for you the card, and they take you to the right clinic. So in the right clinic is doctors. Somebody will do for you the diagnosis. From the diagnosis, then you'll be filtered to whichever specific place you have to go. So most probably presenting at a casualty is better. Because from a casualty, there's a, a system flow of patients. So you'll actually be, be sent to the right person. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali, for your time this evening. Uh, we have been talking about oral tumors, or what in this case was ameloblastoma or mouth uh, tumors that one of a client of Dr. Vilembo that we highlighted today on Health Digest had, and she had to undergo radical jaw surgery so that that tumor could be re re removed and the doctors were able to give her a new jaw or through a titanium implant. So that's it for, from me tonight on uh, this discussion on Health Digest. We'll take a commercial break and when we come back, we'll continue with Weekend Prime. This is KTN.